I've been using the same distro, or should I say family of distros, for the last two and a half years. And that distro has been Fedora with GNOME until I finished Rizzy OS 36 and started using that, which is Fedora based and uses GNOME. So I've been comfortable in my Linux journey for the last two and a half years now. So I decided I'm just going to switch it up a bit. And after all of the hype for Debian, I decided to install Debian Plasma. Now reviewing Plasma, I'm going to move to a separate video. So this video is going to be going over my experience with Debian so far. It's also worth knowing that even though I am a developer, I'm going to try and do this review in the perspective of an end user. So even though I have multiple years of experience, I'm still going to point out any fixes or tinkering I had to make, even if that is something that would be trivial for your average Arch user to fix. That said, on the non-desktop front, there's a reason Debian servers are so popular. It's a great solid server distro, and it's great for devices like the Raspberry Pi. I don't know if I have one near me. Here's a Quartz 64, but it's a great utility operating system for things where you just need something stable. However, the desktop experience can be interesting, and that's what we'll be talking about today. Now, before I go over my review, let's talk about what's new in Debian 12, since it is a pretty new release, even though you've probably already seen someone else's video in the last three weeks. But basically, they made some changes to how non-free drivers work, and they moved firmware into its own repo separate from the rest of the non-free repo. That way, you can use the non-free firmware repo for drivers and then not have any other non-free stuff on your computer. Also, just like every other major release of Debian, it included a lot of software updates, including an upgrade to kernel 6.1 from kernel 5.10, which is a jump of 11 kernel releases, although it was still two kernel releases behind. It also has an update to GNOME 43 from GNOME 3.38, which is a jump of four GNOME releases, although still one GNOME release behind. And we went from Plasma 5.20 to 5.27, which is a jump of seven Plasma releases and actually is currently the most up-to-date Plasma you can get. Now for the review, first off, let's talk about picking an ISO because finding the right ISO is probably even harder than installing the distribution. And that's saying something because the installation is bad. Let's just go through the website real quick just to see how the ISOs are laid out. I'm gonna go to download right here. And as you can see, the first ISO here is the net install ISO, which is useful for servers. But if you're trying to just set up a desktop, it can be annoying because you're going to have to deal with your slow internet connection and you have to download everything while you're installing. And you just probably don't want that for a desktop. So then you're going to need to find this hyperlink right here because the other releases right here is like older releases and then like different branches. So actually you need to go to getting Debian. And then for an image with a GUI installer, you have to go to the download and installation image thing right here. And then you don't want network boot. You probably don't want the tiny. Okay, actually this wasn't planned. I'm actually just wrong. See, again, I'm still getting confused by the websites. If you click here, it takes you to the small installation images page. You're gonna wanna click on complete installation image. And then finally, you can download a Debian DVD right here with a graphical installer, except as I'll get to later, the Debian graphical installer sucks. So what you're actually going to want to do is go to try Debian live before installing and grab one of these images for whichever desktop you want. And these images will give you access to the Calamaris installer, which is a more traditional installer experience, similar to something like Ubuntu's Ubiquity or most Arch distros use the Calamaris installer too. All right, now that we have a Debian ISO, I just want to go through the installation real quick and just show you my in my issues with it. Now, from a live image, you can boot the default installer using the start installer option, or for Calamaris, you would use live system. Now, first, I want to complain about Debian's default installer, so I'm going to do that first. For one, this is just a minor complaint, but it just kind of looks and feels dated, but who cares? The Windows 11 installer came out with Vista and hasn't changed at all. And here's my first problem with the installer. It's not like Calamaris or Ubiquity or Anaconda where you set everything you want to change and then you can go and get a cup of coffee or take a dump or something and then come back and it's done. This one you edit something and then you have to wait for it to actually do something to the system and then you have to edit something and it just installs as it's going and you can't just, you have to actually be there during the installation. Next up for desktops, this domain thing right here is pretty confusing. You can skip this. And then another thing that's confusing is by default, the installer doesn't put your user in the sudo file unless you leave this root password thing right here blank. And I didn't even realize this until I read something about this in some random YouTube videos comment section, because you kind of just see root password and you don't really read this and then you hit next. 
and then I'll keep going through it again and uh, as you can see here I just set that and now I have to wait for it it's just annoying you can also just tell that this installer is kind of just like made for servers and things like that uh this is a live image but if you get a standard ISO that includes every not every but a lot of different types of packages it by default it gives you the option for a web server and an SSH server so just from that you can tell it's not supposed to be for desktop now I'm going to head to the live ISO because I have some issues with that too. As you can see, when you get to the live environment, in this case for Plasma for this video, there is no indication that this is an installer. It doesn't give you a prompt asking if you want to try or install. There's no taskbar icon. And even if we go to the app menu, it, it the installer is not in favorites. You have to go to system right here and then install Debian. And then it asks for a password. Debian's website doesn't tell you there's going to be a password, so every time I've done this, I've had to go on Firefox. I could just memorize it, but Debian 12 live environment password. Password is just live, but like it's still not like an intuitive user experience to have to go through that. Now, once you get into Calamaris, it will probably work fine. Uh, for some reason, it failed on my first attempt, and then I had to go through it again, and then I didn't do anything differently, but for some reason, it worked the second time. Installing Debian's painful. Now, if you are using Calamaris, you probably will be able to figure it out if you have any Linux experience at all. However, that in standard installer, especially in the standard non-live ISO, I think it's equal difficulty to installing Arch with something like Arch install. And the Arch comparisons, I'm going to be doing those again later. So just if you aren't using Calamaris, it's just a more involved process than installing most other distros. Just you set something, it goes on for about a minute, and then you set something, and it's just a more involved process. Now, even after I got a correct install using Calamaris, I still had some really weird bugs with my installation. For one, despite this not being an ARM system, for some reason Raspberry Pi firmware was installed, and it made me unable to install NVIDIA drivers, because when it would try and update the init RAM FS, it would fail, because this is not a Raspberry Pi, and it had Raspberry Pi firmware. And so I had to manually remove the Raspberry Pi firmware in order to fix this issue. On top of that, once I installed NVIDIA drivers, Plasma would not start on Wayland. It probably is a Plasma bug, to be fair, and not a Debian bug, but I'm just used to being able to use GNOME on Wayland with NVIDIA, just fine on Fedora, so just something to point out. However, after those couple initial fixes I had to do, first thing I did was go onto Flathub, remove the Firefox ESR LTS build that they have, and install normal Firefox, and get a real web browser. Basically, if you're running Debian, you're going to want to be using Flatpaks, because I think it's fine and actually can be a good idea to have a slightly older desktop for stability reasons. However, apps on the other hand, I feel like for apps, that's what you want to keep updating, because I feel like a minor bug in an app, just from it being more up-to-date, is going to be a lot less painful than a minor bug in your desktop environment that you're going to have to deal with the entire time you're using your system. And I feel like the risk of extra bugs, which I haven't really experienced using Flatpaks, is outweighed by the pros of getting all the extra bonus updates and features from your apps. So because of that, I have been using Flatpaks on my Debian system. Now from running Fedora-based systems, I've gotten in the habit of upgrading my system basically almost every day if not every other day however i've only had like maybe two or three updates on debian at the most that's kind of what you expect you aren't supposed to go into debian expecting to be getting daily updates but take that for what you will everything is supposed to be stable and you just won't be getting that many updates and ever since the installation when i had to deal with those two issues i have not had a single other thing i've had to deal with that is debian's fault it's has just stayed stable, rock solid. I haven't had any issues with it using flat packs or anything. And so if you're just looking for something like that, Debian's perfect. However, I don't think I'd recommend it to beginners or even as a distro that you would install on your mom's computer. Basically, the way I think of Debian is more of how I think of a distro like Arch than a more complete distro like, I don't know, Linux Mint or Elementary. You might be thinking Arch and Debian, those are completely different. Like Arch is like brand spanking new and Debian's like old. I don't know where that voice came from. That's what I think my viewers sound like. But basically what I mean by that is Arch is kind of a platform. You have to go into it yourself, choose what packages you want, and you can figure everything to be just the way you like it. 
And I think that's kind of what you're supposed to do with Debian too. Like, I don't really feel like I'm getting the right peer Debian experience when I go and download a standard live ISO and just use it like that, because there are a lot of issues. I feel like even with as much as I complained about the standard installer earlier, I think that standard installer where you customize everything a little bit more is the way you use it. And then after the installation, you need to like form it into just the setup you want and set it up how you want it. And then with that, it'll stay like that, whereas Arch will keep updating and you'll have to keep dealing with it. So for me, I think like the setup of Debian is about the same as Arch with the difficulty of installation and all of the choices you have to make while installing it, where in no, Debian is not like manual. I mean like installing Arch with Arch install or a script. So I think it's similar to Arch in that way with the major difference being that Debian's gonna stay completely still and you won't have to keep maintaining it, whereas Arch, you're going to have to keep maintaining it thanks to all of the updates and everything you're getting. Just everything's a vanilla package, albeit older. They don't make that many upstream changes. Or maybe I think some of the web browsers, they ship like DuckDuckGo or rem and remove proprietary stuff from that. But for the most part, you're getting a pure vanilla experience on all of your packages. And it'll stay solid, but again, you have to kind of form it into what you want it to be. And I think because of that, that's just why Debian is kind of the standard for servers and single board computers. So it, it stayed rock solid for me personally. I know three weeks isn't actually enough time to measure that and experience different issues with it. In order to actually like thoroughly review a distro, I feel like you have to be using it for at least like a month and a half, two months. So I can't tell you how reliably it works, although Debian does have a reputation for working reliably. However, if you aren't trying to like form your own system yourself and use it like that, I probably wouldn't recommend Debian as my first pick, even for a beginner. And also another thing is I think when Debian first comes out, when a new release is, the first like three weeks of the Debian release is kind of the golden age of that release. And that's also when all of the reviews come out and people praise it because it supports, oh, it has all the new hardware support with the new kernel and everything. But as you get closer to the next release, to the release of Debian 13, and then after that 14, things start going downhill. You no longer have the hardware support. You're going to be missing out on extra performance from your hardware due to like a lack of Mesa drivers. And in that aspect, the Debian experience will get sort of worse and worse as you go on. That's something a lot of the reviewers don't talk about because they just use it for like two or three weeks, some of them like three days when it first comes out and then they recommend it. But I've gotten burned from Debian before, so I just wanted to put that out there in this video. Other than that, though, if you need a stable platform for something, Debian would be one of the go-to distros for that. Like if you're trying to run a home lab or run some sort of VPS, Debian's perfect for that because, again, it's pretty customizable and then it stays still after. But on the desktop, there can improve on the desktop. So. I hope you guys don't hate me too much. I know I have an interesting take on Debian. I haven't really seen any other videos that kind of approach Debian the way I do. Let me know what other distros I should try. I'm going to try and avoiding just Ubuntu and Arch distros that just have a different theme. I'm currently just in the process of looking at other distros for inspiration for my own. So if you find any very unique distros that aren't just Arch with a different theme, comment that in the comment section and I may take a look at it. That said, thank you for watching. Thanks to my only patron because I took a break from YouTube for a while. Sam Covet, and I'll see you in the next one.